Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest on the very heavy rain and potential thunderstorms we do see later this week. We've been watching this low pressure system over the last um, sort of three or four days and now the models have started to upgrade it and as it comes into shorter range we're starting to see there could be some very um, significant impacts and you can see yellow warning has already been put in force for Friday. So do remember if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, links in the description. So if we do have a look at the latest uh, UK Met Office warnings, it's for that low pressure system that is moving through Thursday into Friday. As it moves out into the North Sea, it becomes cut off from the jet stream. And at that point, it stays pretty stagnant, and we do see some very slow-moving, thundery downpours, and it could cause some localised surface water impacts. Now, it's quite far out for a thunderstorm warning um, from the Met Office, and it seems like the last few weeks all we've been really talking about is thunderstorms because we've had so many warnings and so many thunderstorms around across the UK over the last few weeks. But again, it's continuing with this thundery sort of outlook simply because of the unsettled weather we are seeing after that heat wave we had in the middle of July. So you can see heavy showers are expected across most of the UK on Friday and within the warning area these showers and thunderstorms will be slow moving and could cause localised surface water impacts. There could be a lot of um, var var variating uh, rainfall amounts uh, with some areas only seeing 20 or 30 millimetres, other areas seeing 80 or 100 millimetres and of course this is after the initial frontal rain goes through on Thursday from the low pressure system. So we could be seeing a lot of rain through Thursday and Friday and again Another thunderstorm warning has been enforced. As I said, very, very early on um, for the thunderstorm warnings, compared to what we've had recently, where we've seen thunderstorm warnings put in force in the morning um, of the day uh, that we're seeing those storms. So, being this far advanced, the Met Office do ha must have some um, pretty high confidence that it's either going to come off or the risk is very, very high. Now, of course, they have their, their models they have access to and the parameters are much more high resolution and better detailed um, than the ones that are freely available online. So they perhaps are looking at things we aren't able to quite see yet on the models available online. Um, so it's looking pretty significant through Friday afternoon. And of course, this is not the only area of thunderstorms. This is just where the highest confidence of significant thunderstorms, as we look at the models in a minute, you can see there are even some for the south and further northwards. So we just have to keep an eye on this because it is very early for a UK Met Office thunderstorm warning, um, uh, at least recently. So it must be something really quite significant the Met Office is seeing. So if we do run through the Arpege first, we'll have a look at the precipitation charts and then we'll go through the longer range um, pressure charts. So you can see over the next few days, of course, there's going to be dotted showers around as we've had um, recently, as we're sort of in between weather patterns. We haven't got low pressure over top of us, nor we have high pressure. We have pretty slack flow, which does mean things are generally dry, not particularly windy, um, but still storms and showers can form, and where they do, they will be slow moving, of course. Through Wednesday, we do start to see some rain coming in off the Atlantic for Ireland and more showers, but it's really Wednesday into Thursday, and then by Thursday morning into the afternoon, where we see this big weather front come across the whole country, um, bringing pretty heavy rain widely through Thursday afternoon into the evening. And you can see that low really doesn't move much. By Friday, you can see spiralling around that low pressure system. It's very heavy showers and thunderstorms, and that's why we have that warning in force. Beyond that, even by Friday evening into Saturday morning, things only very slowly clear. Um, and then looking towards Saturday into Sunday, it's not looking great. Um, still that low pressure having quite a high influence. Now, of course, not all of the blue on this chart will be rain. These models do slightly overdo it, especially um, this far out. Um, but it, there is still going to be a lot of rain and a lot of storms around that we have to keep an eye on. If we have a look at the icon run, if we first have a look at the precipitation type, we'll have a look at the accumulations in a minute. You can see run through through Wednesday afternoon, we see weather front pushing into um, North Scotland and then the main weather front for the low heading through the UK by Friday morning. It's starting to clear the east, but we're already seeing those heavy showers pack in from the west. And you see by Friday afternoon, significant thunderstorms taking off in that yellow warning zone. For the southward, still some showers and rain, and northwards of the warning zone, still some showers and rain, but it's not quite as significant as we're seeing in this um, warning zone. So we're really gonna have to keep an eye on how this does develop. 
Um, I don't suspect uh, at, at this stage it's going to be those massive summery thunderstorms, but being very slow moving with very heavy rain within it and sort of forming into lines, which we often see when they swirl around areas of low pressure. We could be seeing some very high rainfall totals, and that's where we could get some surface water flooding. Beyond that, we do still have more showers spreading in, potentially some storms in the south through Saturday morning, and then getting a widespread day of um, sunshine and showers, if not thunderstorms, through Saturday afternoon to the evening. And then Sunday, things slowly clearing, but still more showers around. So it's looking very, very unsettled. If we do have a look at the precipitation and accumulations, by the end, you can see in the yellow warning zone, we are seeing widely around an inch, so 25 millimeters plus. Some areas seeing um, double that amount or triple that amount. Some areas seeing a little bit lower. So we we'll just have to keep an eye on these rainfall totals now. They aren't the most accurate, um, considering it's 120 hours away. But um, it just gives it gives you an idea at the moment where we could be seeing the heaviest rainfall totals. And of course, um, these models don't always take into account the slow-moving nature and the sort of convective, localised nature of these storms, where one area can see 100 millimetres, 10 miles away can only see 10 or 20 millimetres. So it doesn't quite play into that sort of microclimate that we do see in reality. So just take these with a bit of pinch of salt, but it does show you where the heaviest rain will be. If we now run through the UK Met Office run, um, now of course this is the, may the model made by the UK Met Office or run by their computers, so it's, I suspect it is very much used in their warnings, so we'll have to be interesting to see what this does show for that Friday afternoon period. You can see still some dotted showers and then weather front moves through by Wednesday into Northern Ireland and Scotland through sort of Wednesday morning to the afternoon before fizzling out and again more showers through Wednesday afternoon for many areas in England, Wales and Scotland. And then we see that heavier persistent rain coming in off the Atlantic, weather from sweeping through by Thursday afternoon to evening. And then by Friday lunchtime, wow, a massive spread of heavy, thundery showers um, all the way uh, across from Scotland, all the way down to southern England, and including Ireland and Northern Ireland as well, and Wales. So pretty much the whole of the British Isles are seeing showers and thunderstorms. Now I do suspect, of course, they're most likely in that yellow warning zone. They're most likely to, to have lightning activity in the yellow warning zone, of course. Um, elsewhere, more likely to be showers. But looking at these charts, you can't rule out heavy thunderstorms pretty much um, anywhere. Um, so it's really looking pretty significant um, for Friday afternoon. So if you have got any plans for Friday, at the moment, you really need to keep your eyes peeled on this forecast um, as it could be quite miserable on Friday with some areas seeing a lot of rain and some disruption as well with the potential, of course, of surface flooding. So really keep an eye on that. Uh, on the forecast and the weather warnings as well and i'll be updating that every day uh, until friday so very interesting to see this yellow warning put in force um i want to just really yeah, of course keep an eye on how this does develop i suspect looking how early this yellow warning has been put out we could in fact if the models do verify with this sort of scenario we do see lines starting to develop within the showers we could see amber warnings put in force but i'll update you that if that does come into force Beyond that, we do still see more showers move through Saturday and eventually by Sunday. Things are starting to turn a little bit dry, but of course, still close to low pressure, so things are still a little bit unsettled. If we now run through the GFS, and then we'll have a look at the ECWF and the GFS ensemble, we're looking at the longer term, because of course it is unsettled for now, but as I've said in the last few videos, we are seeing hints from around the 10th, 12th, 13th of August, things are starting to potentially trend a little bit warmer and drier. So if we do run through, you see that low pressure through Thursday and Friday, that's going to be giving that heavy frontal rain and then those thunderstorms. And you can see by Friday afternoon, it's pretty much stalled. And the reason for this is because the upper level uh, troposphere jet stream is moving along this high pressure and digging southwards. And it's becoming a little bit detached from this low pressure system. So not giving it, it uh, the oomph to sort of get through to Scandinavia where its normal track would be. And you can see it just really lingers for a good couple days over the top of the UK before eventually being absorbed back into the ice and low pressure system. And then we start to see high pressure trying to build in for Tuesday the 10th, but it's trying to push away this low pressure system. And in the south, far southeast, we are seeing warmer and drier conditions, seeing the potentially 12 or maybe even 14 or even maybe 16 degree isotherm moving in. 
before low pressure tries to push in, potentially providing thunderstorms, but always in the south, things are looking a potentially a little bit drier. Further north, it's always got that low pressure over ice and trying to make influence. So we'll just have to see which one really wins out. And on this current GFS run, over the longer term, it does look like low pressure will eventually win out. But by 384 hours, those lows over Iceland are starting to be shunted away again. And we're seeing high pressure with southerly winds. And you can see hot air starting to come up from the south. So although the low pressure is trying to disrupt the high pressure on this GFS run, the GFS is very adamant in building that high pressure. First around the 10th to 12th in the south and southeast. And then by sort of 18th, 19th um, or even 17th of August, starting to build it back in for all areas. So we'll just have to keep an eye on how this develops. It is all on sort of the 8, 9, 10 day plus time frames. So of course, it's a little bit uncertain at this stage, but it's looking pretty, pretty encouraging for hot and uh, dry weather fans. If we now have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. We do run through, you see that low coming through and sort of um, getting stuck over Scotland with those showers and thunderstorms. By Wednesday, it's starting to clear around the 11th of August, but we've got this little pesky low over towards items with the GFS. It is drawing up some southerly winds, so some warmer air to the southeast. Um, and especially for the eastern half, will be dry and quite hot. But further westwards, low pressure making more of an influence. By 200, 240 hours, you can see the ECMWF goes a little bit of a different pattern with this sort of low pressure getting cut off sitting over Scotland. This would be a pretty miserable scenario um, as it would have, of course, very slow moving showers sort of stuck over the top of the UK. And it's because of this, uh, the high pressure is building up more to Scandinavia. This high pressure sunk southwards by a few hundred miles. It squeezes out that low pressure a little bit more, and then we could potentially see more drier and hot conditions. So, a little bit different there from the ECMWF, um, and we just have to keep an eye on it, again, of course, because it's on the uncertain sort of time frame at this stage. Um, so we always just have to keep an eye um, at that far out as it gets within seven days. So over the next few days, we should again have a better chance uh, of predicting it a little bit better and having a look at what we really could be seeing. But at this stage, it's just hints and the hints are starting to look more positive day on day. If we finally have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see how over the next sort of six, seven days up until around the 10th of August, temperatures are pretty much um, good couple of degrees below average with a lot of precipitation spikes or a lot of convective showers and thunderstorms. As we get towards around the 10th, 12th of August, you do see um, the uh, ensembles start to warm up and you can see many get to around 10 degrees at 850 HPA. The actual average of the ensemble members gets to 10 degrees at 850 HPA, which would give mid to high 20s in the right conditions. And even some getting quite uh, quite a little bit hotter than that towards 12 or 14 degrees. So we'll just have to keep an eye on how that does develop. But it's looking um, encouraging, more and more encouraging with less ensemble members going for cooler scenarios. In the longer term, of course, there's a lot more scatter as we head towards sort of day 12 to day 14. Um, I wouldn't expect there to be too much of a signal at this stage, but it's looking pretty dry generally on the precipitation scale and still um, around average to maybe just a touch above average. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see over the next four, four, four or five days or so, temperatures around 20, 21, maybe 22 degrees. And as we hit towards, of course, the 10th, 12th of August, as temperatures increase, we're starting to see it arise to around 25, 26 degrees potentially on a few ensemble members, and the average is around 23, 24. But of course, it could be a little bit warmer, of course, because uh, this takes um, doesn't really take into consideration microclimate that well, as, as I said with the icon, um, with the rainfall total. So, of course, it could be a little bit hotter than that. So, looking encouraging for the middle of August, but for now, we just need to keep an eye on the unsettled weather over the next sort of five or six days with the heavy rain and thunderstorms coming up later this working week. So, do, uh, um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.